Greetings, greetings to all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's Inspired by Dreams. Shop. It's a preppy streetwear brand I'm just trying to introduce to all my peoples. Okay, today's episode we're talking about cheating. And this all is inspired by the Cardi B and Offset back and forth and the divorce. What I want to say before we get into this, this is not like a bashing, this is not like a back and forth or in anybody's business. This is just a person just explaining it from how I know it and how I grew to understand what love is all about. Now, when I first heard about this whole situation last night going down, I'm seeing that Cardi, she, I commend her for just being strong enough. People don't know the strength it takes to get online and really express how you actually feel. A lot of people don't do that. So when I see a lot of people championing Cardi B, it makes me feel good that people are understanding that we are all human beings. Now, when it comes to the whole back and forth with cheating or not, everybody is going to have their own opinions on it. But if you really love somebody, you don't want to see them hurt. And that's just the base bottom line of just falling in love and staying in love. I see a lot of people in these times, they, they're more attracted to the outside instead of what's inside. When you fall in love with a person, it's not really just about their looks or about how their body shape or anything like that. It's about who that person actually is. And within that bond, you will want to do everything and stay with that person for the rest of your life. So when I see a lot of couples going through it, I try to look at it from like maybe a Gatsby point of view. Just see what brought this and what led to this. And I really think on this time around, it's so plain to see that offsets infidelity. It's something that a lot of men do to hip hop. I don't know if it's the culture. A lot of people are not with the settling down. And, you know, it's something that as a man you grow out of. And it's something that you experience as a young man. And, you know, you, you, you get your rounds in, but... The older you get, the more you understand what love is all about. So we're going to jump into this and just have different conversations on cheating. And have you ever been cheating on? Or if you agree or disagree, should you take your, your you know, if you're feeling some type of way of your partner, taking it to social media, I feel like it's a thing you should do because you're going to meet a lot of people that's going to troll, but you're also going to meet a lot of people that understand. So you guys let me know down below, leave it in the comment section. And we're going to get back to you. All right. Love you guys. Let's jump right into it. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency and my word is law. You done it all. You done it all. Nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. Thank you for my kids, though. All three of them. I don't regret none of them, but I regret you. I don't regret my kids. You good, daddy. You all right. I don't regret them. N not none of them. Not none of them. And before we get go any further, I know everybody loves a fight, but what I do want to commend Cardi for is just having the strength to get on social media and express how she actually feels. This time. People are getting on here and just act like the world is so perfect. And that's one of the reasons why I commend them for that. Fix your crown, queen. Let's get it. But fuck you. I regret you. I'm too good for you. I've always been too good for you. You know I'm too good for you, nigga. And I don't, and I don't ever, 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 ever. I never even wanted to get on this social media because I don't want to turn off the next nigga off because this is not my type of shit. This is not my type of shit. I don't ever want the next nigga to ever think that I'm a messy bitch. But you want to be a messy nigga and do petty shit because you hurt? All right, we going to do it then. Let's go lick for lick. Let's go wrong for wrong. Let's go hit for hit. You. I told you, leave me the alone. Yo, when someone cheats on you, they literally break your spirit. Why me? Why am I not enough? What did I do? And you look right. at everything you didn't gave that person, how much you didn't pour into that person, how much you didn't gave, and how much you didn't gave y'all. Some point, you have to realize, yo, 
you can't no at, at no point can you control that person. You can't control nobody in the situation besides mm-hmm. yourself. So mm-hmm. all you can do in this situation is focus on yourself. Focus right. on you, focus on your kid, focus on bettering yourself. And that looks like career, that looks like education or whatever that needs to happen for you. But, th- and then <laughs> this is where it becomes a, a lot more difficult to do that. It's easy for us to say focus on yourself, but it's hard for you to focus on yourself when you become obsessed in your way of thinking. When your worth becomes attached to how a person treats you or how a person loves you, you can't see yourself because you have already pedestalized this person. Immediately after I found out about my husband's infidelity, there was one thing that I was certain of, and that was that I needed space. We needed space. So I asked my husband to leave. And I did that because I knew that in the past, I had made the mistake of not giving myself time to process, time to think, time to feel by myself. And I also knew that in those situations, I would always forgive and I would force myself to move on because I chose to forgive. So now I'm making myself forget. I'm making myself move on. And that was not healthy. So this time I knew that this was way too big for me to not take the space that I needed. It was way too big for me to think, feel, and process in the presence of my husband, in the presence of the person who has committed these acts that have hurt me. I could not allow myself to do that. I didn't know if I wanted to stay. I didn't know if I wanted to leave immediately because of course it had just happened, but I knew I needed space. And so I took it. Another thing that I have struggled with in the past is embarrassment and pride. And this time I knew that I was not going to let embarrassment or pride or any any sort of shame hinder my healing. That is always what the enemy has used against me to keep me silent. And so this time when anybody asked me, and of course I got asked, where's your husband? Is he okay? What's going on? I told them what was going on. I told them we were separated. If anyone wanted to know what happened, I told them. I was not ashamed. I was not embarrassed because I didn't do anything. Let me tell you, there was so much freedom in that. Take your space if you need it. Take your time if you need it. Do not let embarrassment or shame stop you from healing. Yo, when I tell you these niggas ain't shit, please believe me. They gon' not fun anything. These niggas way too easy. Good for nothing. Low down dirty dog. I'm convinced. Next time you see your mama tell her how she raised the bitch, I'm going out. Sad, cause it's hot out. You was playing games. You on time out. Where them fine niggas? We're trying to find niggas. I've been cuffed up too long. Let me remind niggas. I don't play with cheating. Like, I'm telling you, like, to me... The worst thing a person can do is cheat on you. Like, I don't play with that. I don't forgive that. I don't, like, I just don't. To me, people that cheat, like, you have absolutely zero moral compass and you have no integrity. Like, it's okay to be unhappy in a relationship, but a conversation should be made of I'm unhappy and maybe we should go our separate ways for a while. Like, an understanding needs to be made. But to literally deceive someone to me is like bottom of the barrel. Like I don't play that at all. And that's why when I hear like people forgiving cheating or taking a cheater back, like, no. A lot of y'all women keep saying, if he don't tell me that he married, how I'm supposed to know he married, you're supposed to ask. Anytime you meet a person right now in 2023, you need to automatically assume that they're committed to another person. And in order to avoid having any type of heartbreak, a headache, or being in any drama, ask these people those questions. Hey, are you married? Are you seeing somebody? Are you in an open relationship? Is your wife okay with this? Is your Are y'all divorced? Are y'all... Because see, a lot of people, it's hard for them to get a divorce. The, getting a divorce is actually very expensive, and it'd be a lot of stuff that's tied up in getting a divorce. But a lot of these people are separated, right? But before you lay down with a person that's committed to another person on paper, you need to make sure you check with both parties. If this man say, 
him and his wife ain't on good terms, tell him to call his wife on FaceTime so she could tell you that y'all not that they not on good terms. Tell him to call this woman so you can look her in her face and ask her, hey, your old man wanna talk to me? He said, y'all y'all not on good terms. He said, y'all separated, is this true? Be woman enough, don't be, don't be getting caught up in no situation with no man. And you talking about, I didn't know he was married. You're not dumb, did you ever ask? He don't, he really don't necessarily have to tell you he married, but you should owe it to yourself to ask. And if he is separated with the lady or whatever, and they still married on paper, ask her too. Are you cool with me talking to your husband? It's still her husband. <laughs> Y'all gonna be mad about that though. This is probably the best revenge a woman could ever have on her cheating husband. So imagine this, your husband's a doctor, he's making a lot of money. Y'all live a good life together, but he's been putting in extra hours with multiple staff members. You catch him in the act one day, and he has a whole mental breakdown. Yes, that's right. The person that's been cheating and doing their thing comes up with an entire story about how they haven't been right, how they need to seek mental help. So he gets checked into our psych ward. Mind you, somewhere or another between their discourse, he told her that I don't want to be here anymore. I want to unalive myself. So of course she shares this with the ward and everything before taking him to the psych ward because he had to go to the emergency room first, then get brought up to our floor. Soon as she knows that he's actually going to get brought into our unit, she tells him, I never want to see you again. You disgust me and I'll be gone by the time you get out. And then when he gets to our floor, he has an actual mental breakdown. I'm talking full on not going to the bathroom, but deciding to defecate on himself not showering buddy hit the full depression mode meanwhile wife is taking this opportunity to get her affairs in order at the crib and make sure that they ain't an item no more it's something else seeing a prominent person somebody that thinks they can't be touched by the world's woes ending up on the hill of humility having their portion of humble pie oh he was regretful he was regretful when you think about it she literally left him in his own shit what do y'all think about this? Do you think this guy deserves any sympathy? Obviously, from a worker standpoint, he got taken care of and treated just like anybody else that had any mental issues. But from a context perspective, do you think that this guy is getting what he deserves? Hey, y'all. I think my husband's cheating on me with another man. So here's, here's why. Last night, we stayed up and we prepped our meals for the week. We're a couple days behind because we went on vacation last weekend. And we stayed up and we cooked chili together until almost like one o'clock in the morning because we have kids and it's just the only time we had to do it. We cooked a big batch. Well, this morning I am the one that gets up first. I take one of the children to school and then I've got to head to work. And I my husband was the last one to kind of wrap things up in the middle of the night and I opened the refrigerator and I saw that there was a container, a container of chili. So I grabbed it and it had like a nicely, perfectly wrapped up bag of Mexican cheese to put on the chili. So I grabbed the container and the cheese because I figured that that was for me. But then I got a text while I was at work and he was like, what did, why'd you take that chili? And I was like, what are you talking about? Because there was two, there was two in the fridge. Um, and he was like, that was for Andy, which is like his work bro. And I was just like, what do you mean? Like you're packing him lunch? It's kind of weird, right? Do men do that? When you're a broke man, you're limited in terms of the women you can access. Yeah. You can only access the limited range of women. So you're only going to access a simple kind of woman because you're a simple man. That simple woman doesn't have many options. So you're both optionless and you're both good to go. So what happens is as a man becomes more successful, his criteria and selection of women becomes more provocative, promiscuous. It's usually the dream girl. That dream girl knows 10 of you. But if you choose that, you know, simple girl that works in Starbucks, of course she's going to be loyal to you. But what high value man chooses that? He chooses the sexiest girl on screen. So he's always, I always say to men who are high value rich, especially in Dubai, before I've even met that girl, I'm actually cheating on you. Why? Because she likes you for your lifestyle and she knows plenty of men with your lifestyle. When it comes to cheating and when it comes to hurting people, we gotta look at it like this. You know, a lot of people in these times try to compare relationships from back in the day to now. And the difference usually is 
now people are saying, you know, it's social media, it's social media. But what I can say is a lot of people think that they have so many options and it's not like that. It's kind of like uh, all you can eat buffet. Like you can eat whatever you want. But do you want to eat and stuff yourself until you just get sick and throw up? Come on. You have to be reasonable with yourself, your partner, and know if you want to take something, you know, beyond at least 20, 30 years. I mean, come on. We have to really start focusing and realize that social media might present an option on the display, but it doesn't mean that it's for everybody. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.